But other than that, then, there's not really much interest. With them. This morning, we heard the UN Special Rapporteur on Poverty, Extreme Poverty and Human Rights uh, presenting his comprehensive report at the end of an 11-day field visit where he has met government agencies, he has met um, uh, voluntary organizations, human rights activists, uh, government uh, officials, he has gone to the field, to prisons, to Orangasli Kampong, uh, to migrant workers, he has traveled to Sabah, Sarawak, uh, Klantan. So it's quite an extensive uh, visit within 11 days. And the basic issue that he was looking at is, uh, is poverty still a reality uh, in the Malaysian context? And the report is comprehensive because it not only addresses um, uh, poverty line uh, income and measurement, he's also highlighting uh, specific target groups that have been neglected or not well addressed. I think the key of it being uh, indigenous people including the natives of Sabah and Sarawak, uh, as well as the Orang Asli community. One of his main critique of the development planning and targeting on poverty uh, has been that we switched in, I think, the 10th or 11th Malaysia plan to relative poverty, which is a focus on the B40, which that has in some ways neglected uh, the B10 or the bottom end because Malaysia then and officials think poverty is not an issue but it's actually an issue in specific uh, targeted groups. Uh, he also highlighted uh, the issue of migrants, refugees, stateless people uh, who, who have been on the neglected side. Uh, at the public policy level it's not just measurement of poverty but also social protection system. And I think those of us researching on these areas can concur uh, that these are points that the new government in the preparation of the 12th Malaysia plan and in looking at the theme of shared prosperity have to take the report seriously. Um, so it's a benchmark on the level of development, uh, the richness and the prosperity of the country and that there are specific targeted groups that have been neglected. Um, so I think this is a wake-up call uh, for the Pakatan Harapan government uh, that of course has focused much on addressing corruption and so forth, uh, but I think it needs to look at the reality of poverty, not just the statistics of poverty. The statistics is showing there are very few people who are poor, but a field visit of 11 days is indicating uh, uh, much more uh, in that context. So the government has justified it by you know household expenditure uh, pattern and they have put. So the figure is not realistic and other researchers, he made reference to Kazana, Bank Nagara, have put the living wage or a more realistic figure at a higher level. But income alone is not enough because you then need to look at access to education, access to health care, uh, stable job, uh, saving, social security uh, and so forth, which are important dimensions uh, that need to be looked at in the process. He also challenged the government in the analysis that access to micro data is not there. Uh, that means specific. So it's generalities that government has reason. And so I think it's important for the Pakatan Harapan government that committed uh, right to information, that means to journalists, to researchers, that real data is made available. It cannot be kept secret by government agencies to highlight. So the question is stateless people. So he highlighted the stateless people are not foreigners that he's talking about. They are Malaysians, but no government agency has any data on it because they said no one registered. So is it not the responsibility of the government now to actually go to the ground and find all these people, not to imprison them or terpaksa them or to scare them, but to document and find solutions. If they are Malaysians, if they are born here, they are not from elsewhere, 
the deprivation experienced by children, by women, in a generational poverty of not having a birth certificate or identification. Professor Philip is saying he met many who came to him. So possibly Pakatan Harapan should set up a special consultative council or a commission to follow up this report. This is a damning report on Malaysia and, and this new government must take United Nations assessment of an independent repertoire seriously. Set up a consultative council, bring all the activists, academicians who are doing poverty research, bring politicians on all sides to study the report, go to the ground, meet all the people. If this is really true, then make the changes that are needed. Don't hide behind it. Because this is not, this is a new government. So the new government cannot use just old data and analysis. It must take seriously this recommended. So I would propose set up a commission, independent, there are enough researchers, academics, civil society activists, uh, study the report, don't dismiss it, study the report, find the strengths of it, address the problem so that beyond 2020, the shared prosperity agenda will be a reality, not for the rich and powerful, politically connected, but for every Malaysian, uh, and also others who are living uh, in Malaysia at this point in time. I think it's a critical matter.